Jesus showing up one last time in physical form, in a relational form to Peter to let him know, listen dude, you are not who you used to be, despite what you think. Now how many would say that you've had this struggle before? That you begin to walk with the Lord and you go to church for a while and you're doing pretty good and then something happens and you slip back a little bit or that thing you'd stop doing, suddenly that, that day you did it again. And suddenly you felt so unworthy, so unqualified for God to ever use you. Now you have to back up and go to the drawing board. In fact, you're so ashamed of yourself now, you're doing what Adam did, the first Adam. You're hiding yourself from God. Do you guys understand that when Adam was hiding from God, he was still in the realm of God? He had not been thrown out? Do you ever think about some of those finer details? Adam fell. He sinned. He did what God told him not to do. Did you ever think about the fact that God still showed up to walk in the cool of the day with Adam despite that? And the only reason the whole connection changed was because Adam was running from God. Adam was hiding from God. Adam felt disqualified now. Adam felt unworthy now. Adam thought, I am not who I used to be. He was still in the garden of God after he fell. God still was showing up that day to walk with him in the cool of the day. After he fell. It was only because Adam couldn't take accountability, responsibility for his own life, confess his sin, acknowledge who, what had happened, not who he was, but what had happened. God couldn't restore him, so he had to remove him for man to get it. Jesus shows up to Peter to say, Peter, you've been walking with me for three years now. And I know there's a whole lot of things in your life you thought you would have overcome and mastered by now. And you're looking in the mirror going, man, has anything changed in my life? I want you to know I'm inside of you now. And I know that you're struggling the way that Paul is getting ready to teach about. There's this struggle going on between flesh and spirit. And that battle is going to go on for the rest of your life. But I want you to know it's no longer you that lives, but Christ that lives in you. 2,000 years later, we struggle to get that revelation. It is no longer I that lives, but Christ that lives in me. Scott, it's messed up, man. I'll do great for three days and then have a day that I don't do so great. I will control some part of my flesh for years and then one day have a relapse. I will maintain my composure, my patience, Keep it all where it's supposed to be and for days and weeks and then all of a sudden go through a season where I go, man, alive, what's wrong with me? How many of you guys can relate? You see, we're all trying to arrive somewhere with this. And there's no arrival place. That's why we're saved by faith. Not by works. Works is what we use to define this. But I can't be saved by that. I find myself daily hopelessly lost based on this. And so it's by grace through faith that we're saved. Why does it take faith? Faith to accept that it's no longer based on me, but Him that's in me.